Are you tired of being manipulated, of being a doormat for other people? Are you tired of feeling shame? Especially as entertainers, this is kind of our default setting, but yet confidence is the key to success. Welcome back to the Spooky Sessions. Every year in October, I do a seasonal series on breaking down each of the seven deadly sins and the things that we can learn from these seven deadly sins because instead of letting these seven deadly sins steal, kill, and destroy us, how can we weaponize it for our benefit? Starting with pride, our first deadly sin, here are three easy ways to weaponize pride in your life. Number one is acknowledge your wins. Number two is practice sharing without shame. Number three is shift your mindset that pride isn't a sin when it's rooted in truth. For more, comment greed as that is the next deadly sin. Do you ever feel like, oh, I don't have it all. I plead that there's so much more that I need. My head is so full of greed. I just want to succeed. Are you constantly chasing more, but you're never satisfied? In fact, you're pretty spoiled rotten, but yet this void is just never fulfilled. It's time to break the chain of greed disguised as ambition. Greed is wanting and wanting is desire and desire is passion and passion is authenticity. So greed really isn't a bad thing, but timing is the key. And what you really need as opposed to all the things you want in greed is to be placing the word anticipation where instant gratification is currently at. There is a reason why there is a wait for the destination. Anticipation is what makes anything in life worth it. If you so desire for me to cover the next deadly sin, comment lust below. On today's episode of Lust, have you ever noticed how people often criticize us for chasing after the things we want? As if us chasing the things we want personally affects them. Truth is, it does. You know why? Because it makes them uncomfortable. Why does it make them uncomfortable? Because our ambition, our desire, our passion shines a spotlight on their lack of action. When you want more out of life, it forces others to confront the fact that they are in fact settling. But why should your desire for greatness be tamed to make others feel better? If your dreams offend somebody else, that is their problem. So who is really the one lusting? Or is that envy? Find out in the next episode. On today's topic of envy, have you ever been scrolling through social media and you got this knot in your stomach? And you know what this knot is? It's a reminder of what you don't have. And instead of being motivated by the things that you want, you start to question your own abilities instead. Because the truth is, seeing someone else's success actually shines a light on our own insecurities. It forces us to sit with the fact that we might not actually be where we want to be. Start asking yourself, what can I learn from their success. I want to challenge you to start celebrating your peers because you know what? Envy loses its power when you celebrate other people's wins. Are you starving for more of my content? Don't worry, it's bottomless. I will be back next with my topic on gluttony. Comment recipe if you're ready. Did you know that gluttony doesn't have to be about food? In fact, most of the time, the desire for more is rooted in things in our personal life more often than food. Gluttony is the idea of wanting more, but wanting more often makes you lose focus of what it is that you truly want because you start to focus on things that you don't even need which then leads you into this state of overwhelm. And overwhelm, more often than not, causes burnout. Burnout then makes you start to lose progress. It's kind of ironic how instead of elevating you, it actually exhausts you. Could this potential roar in your stomach be due to an underlying layer of wrath instead of gluttony? Find out in my next episode.
Are you an entertainer who has been rejected or turned down for some reason or lost a competition? I'm going to come out on a bit of a limb and say, let me just guess that your reaction was very angry. And I say angry because as entertainers, we are, as much as we try to work on this, believe me, I know we do, we are cold-blooded in the sense that we live for needing that validation, that approval, that acceptance. And we're like a snake being told that we can't live in the outdoors when we face that rejection because we're not qualified our rattles start shaking to try and show the judges just who we are and what we're capable of but the truth is wrath does not give you power it actually takes it away say may the bridges i burn light the way and use that wrath to fuel you and don't stop because the next topic we're going to talk about is sloth and not procrastinating comment fuel if you're ready Welcome to the seventh deadly sin. Ugh, sloth. I've been procrastinating on this episode, believe it or not. <laughs> I have realized through working on this episode that sloth is not always a sign of laziness. It can also very much be a sign of burnout, of overwhelm, or uncertainty. What if instead of trying to fight this urge of feeling like a sloth, we started to hone into why are we feeling this way? It could be because we're really just that tired, but it could also be because sloth keeps us in the comfort zone that does not lead us to growth. Sometimes when this happens, we do need to rest. We do. We need time to recharge, to reflect and refine our goals, but we need to set a limit. We need to set a limit that we are going to rest only to refuel and not to avoid action. Comment perseverance below to prove you're not a sloth.